As soon okay. as you count down, it's go, it disappears. Camera is rolling. Michelle Chambers, take two, five, four, three, two. Now, over the past few years, the Port of Los Angeles has been working on a skills center. Uh, the port has managed to get some funding from the state, I think through the Workforce Center, uh, but more importantly, it managed to get uh, other sorts of uh, funding for it. And the intention behind the Skills Center is to actually make sure that more disadvantaged uh, communities who have not previously had access to those good union jobs will actually be able to get trained and others retrained to get those jobs. Uh, but do you have any sort of policy uh, prescriptions or at least a vision of how we can get more working class folks in California, working Californians, to get actual good union jobs? You know, that's a great question, Terrell. And one of my, uh, my father, who I've been doing a pipeline for 40 years, he was an apprentice. Mm -hmm. We have to really show the shine light on our apprenticeship programs here in the state of California. We have some amazing apprenticeship programs from carpenters to pipe fitters to boiler makers. We have some excellent trades and they're livable wages, but they're also forgivable jobs. Mm -hmm. Those who are coming home from incarcerated facilities, those are great jobs for them to go into as well. Right. So as your senator, I will make sure that I spearhead um, and champion the word, getting the word out of our union labor apprenticeships. We definitely need that in our community. All right. Again, it gives our community a leg up. Also, it gives those, um, like I said, with livable wages who can afford housing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to afford housing, you have to have livable wages. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Bradford uh, was one of the Energy uh, Committee. Uh, he's still in office, he's still on those committees, and he did some, uh -huh. a great deal of work uh, in regards to making sure that energy is affordable. Uh, talking about electricity and making sure that these energy companies are not reaming us <laughs> as we're being affected by the affordability crisis. Um, my thought is, you know, what are your ideas on might be to help, help Californians going forward? Well, that would definitely include being part of that conversation. So, I'll give you an example. What you're talking about is be serving on the PUC boards. Mm -hmm. But then we see the Public Utility Commission taxes. Let's get part of that conversation. If you look at your bill, you see taxes, utility tax, this tax. That's like we understand that we do need taxes to feed into our economy. Into our state. We understand that. However, I do think that we should look at a demographic that that should not include. Okay. Our seniors, it is extremely cost-heavy to burden them with these excru excruciating taxes that hurts their pocket every year. Mm -hmm. It's hard. So I think we did, as you said, I want to take an assessment um, of the needs of our community, the affordability of our public utilities, and also compare that to how it is affecting our, the person pocketbooks of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, one of you know, the jobs of any elected in California is balancing the needs of labor and environmental justice. Uh, especially in the harbor community and where we're surrounded by the port, uh, oil wells, Rancho LPG, LNG. I mean, locally, we have uh, an activist group who've been campaigning to get uh, Rancho LPG, which is the subsidiary of yeah. All Plains of American, uh, to close down because it's a danger. It's like somebody explode a bomb, ignite all the oil wells. You basically have a nuclear bomb destroying all of the harbor area, but what do you think is the proper balance uh, between environmental uh, justice interests interest and labor? Because it's always an ongoing balancing act. It is. Um, that balance first would have to include the people, the people, jobs, and the safety of, the, of, of everyone. So it's the balancing act would be one, we have to protect the employment uh, demographic, or no matter where that is. If it is in that industry, it's in that industry. Um, if it's not in that industry, then it's not in that industry. But we still have to protect the positions. And I'll give you a case in point. If they decide to diversify their portfolio, then we need to make sure those jobs go right along with it. We have to make space for that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we have to also be honest and have an honest conversation. Or we're not going to be at this place anytime soon. But we can also work together and help still clean up, uh, work in a clean, a clean climate, if you will. Which I see that a lot of doing that. They've um, knocked down some docks, added some filters, which is kind of costly. I do think that they're meeting some of the um, requirements um, by the EPA. That I think they're about over 75% to 80% now. I think that's a good step more forward. Mm -hmm. So I think we should honestly say 
they're doing their best. They're trying. Can we can all do our part and do more if we want to be honest. But I do think that we have to first remember the people, the people that work there. The jobs are first. Mm -hmm. and out of everything, jobs are first. And I do think that we all want to live in a clean economy. We all want to live in a clean environment. We all want to live in a clean community. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one thing that we all have in common, but we all can work together. This is a, this, the both can, two can coexist. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't have to be. We don't have to be oil against labor. Mm -hmm. We don't. We can be, how about we be about the people? Mm -hmm. I think that's where we need to start. I know that's right. Uh, I had a pause. <laughs> <laughs> Threw you off. <laughs>